UGEM Instruments presents Inside Sound Minds, an exclusive behind the scenes look at leading artists in sound and music. How did they master their art? What role does technology play in their creative process? Take a peek into the minds of some of the world's most acclaimed composers, producers, and musicians. Hello, my name is John Massari, and I am in one of my favorite creative spaces, the Lair Recording Studio in Beverly Wood, California. And it's a fun place to be, and I create music for film and television, some video games. I'm best known for the cult classic Killer Clowns from Outer Space, countless music for the Walt Disney Company, namely the wonderful world of Disney theme, commercials, and just about anything you can imagine. The decision for me to pursue a career in music as a composer started when I was a little boy. I wanted to play the guitar so bad, but my parents never got me a guitar. So I made one from a, a ruler with some rubber bands, and later on, when I was around six years old, my mom got a piano and started taking piano lessons. Well, she found out it really wasn't for her, and it basically sat there kind of like a piece of furniture. I used to tinker with it every once in a while, until I went to a triple feature. I saw The Time Machine, Journey to the Center of the Earth, and Mysterious Island, all of these movies were fantastic movies with wonderful scores that just sparked the imagination. And I found myself when I went home that I would tinker at the piano, I was trying to imitate what I heard. I didn't really understand the connection I was making, but then I would say around when I was like nine or 10, I realized I wanna make music. That's what I wanna do. I wanna recreate that great experience of music for me and for other people. And it wasn't easy. Any venture you take is never gonna be easy. It's always gonna take you out of your comfort zone and it's gonna be difficult. It's gonna hurt and you're gonna feel it. So little by little, I just fell in love with music, with visuals, with film. And um, so I pursued a career in music. I went to music school. I went to the University of California at Los Angeles. I went to school with uh, Christopher Young with uh, Don Davis, you may know him from The Matrix, and Christopher Young, as you know, has a massive volume of uh, films that he's done in his career. It was quite exciting. I had to find my own voice. That took a while, because most of the time when I put play music that I composed to people, they say, oh, that's neat, it sounds like this. I go, well, no, it doesn't. Yes, it does. It sounds like this other thing. So I had to find my own voice and sometimes you can find your own voice with the right project and if you leave your mind open enough that when you get that right project then you can say ah i can strike everything out strike everything down to ground zero and start from scratch and create something new that's unique with me that when people hear it they're going to recognize it as my sound or in this case your sound that was with a movie called killer clowns from outer space but i just knew that this was going to be my movie and it was going to be something special and uh, luckily i got to work with three very special artists the kyoto brothers and they were very uh, very clear they love music from the classic era of of, of sci-fi and horror and they wanted that classic sound except they didn't want it played by an orchestra they wanted it played by a, a variety of different instruments so my job was to manipulate all the great synthesizers that I had at my disposal of the day to create something different. So by the time I, they came to hear some of the first pieces of music, they said, this is wonderful. I've never heard anything like this. And it's beautiful. In spots, it was beautiful. In spots, it was terrifying. Uh, in spots, it was like a derivative of maybe, maybe cartoon music with a little bit of a different flair. But uh, that's, that's the goal is to make a signature sound. What has always fascinated me with the craft and artistry of creating music for media is the tools and how they've evolved over the years. I remember when uh, I was using a Prophet 5 and it did not have MIDI. I remember playing it and I'm saying, isn't it really awesome that we can, um, with a cassette tape, store the data of the sound that I just created, but I wish there was a way to 
to, to record the performance so that this instrument can play it again. And I can change it to a different voice. And uh, the engineer says, you know, they're developing something like that. It's called MIDI. I don't, I just, I don't know if it's ready yet. And they go, MIDI, what the heck does that mean? Is it Musical Instrument Digital Interface? There used to be little uh, hardware-based sequencers that came out. They had a lot of little fun little features. Then it went to software. Then it went to the computer where uh, features could be updated on a regular basis. And I absolutely loved it. And uh, just with mouse, mouse clicks, I created a piece of music off of a, you know, a relatively okay piano sample. And uh, to this day, uh, I, I'm just amazed by all the updates and features and flexibility that you can have uh, with software. I am often asked by directors and producers, why do we have to hire an orchestra when your mock-up sounds so wonderful? And my response to that is it, it sounds so wonderful because it works for you now and your ears are used to it. However, we take this mock-up and make the parts for all the musicians and we put you into the studio with the musicians and you're gonna experience magic, not only when it's being performed and recorded, but when it plays with your film. However, there are situations where uh, we will record an orchestra, a smaller orchestra, and subsidize it with samples and it will, have, it will take on this beautiful color that you can't get if, if you just had strictly all orchestra. There's a certain amount of flexibility. Uh, there's a certain amount of crazy things you could do with uh, sampling and sequencing. But uh, will they replace? No. I think it, there, there's going to be always like a symbiosis, so to speak, of, of the two uh, relying on each other. The most successful projects I have uh, been associated with have been scores where the directors and producers had no idea what kind of music they wanted. The Wonderful World of Disney, they didn't know exactly how they, they know they wanted to get the feeling of being at Disneyland. That's all they told me. And so I recreated that for them. And when I did Killer Clowns from Outer Space, the same thing, there was not one stitch of temp music. If I can somehow uh, wean uh, uh, directors and editors from using music to edit to, to get stuck with, then we can move forward and people can start, we can have a resurgence of great original music. So uh, my creative process is that I fall in love with the project that I'm with. If I can't fall in love with it, it's very difficult to deal with. It's tough sometimes. Sometimes it's the easiest thing in the world. You fall in love with them and you come up with really great uh, you know, musical chord sequences and, and themes and motifs and textures and they just come out, seemingly come out of nowhere because you're, it's, the movie is part of you. And that's what I always strive for. Try to really fall in love with the characters, fall in love with the film, and there's nothing one more wonderful than the taste of completion of a project and having something that you can store away and say this is one project now I will go to the next project my advice to composers that decide to pursue a career in the media industry keep in mind it's a it's a business and it is not for the squeamish and you have to have a certain fire in your heart to pursue it in such a way that you'll, you're going to be, you're going to forego uh, the pleasures that most people uh, enjoy, like weekends, like vacations, holidays. You may lose out on that from time to time. I would say instead of bogging yourself down to figuring out like how, oh, how do I time out a scene properly? How do I do all this? Appreciate that, but however, learn how to make music on its own for music's sake so that you can listen to it on its own. That's a beautiful piece of music. Anyone can listen to it and say, that's a great piece of music. I can see that working in my movie. And then when you start achieving some sort of success, model your activities 
of those that are successful. Also, you want to be able to uh, associate yourself with people who are successful. There's a rule of thumb. You are only as successful as the five people that you associate with, the five closest people you associate with. So uh, bone up on your social skills, that helps. You may be an introverted person, that's okay. Uh, somehow you can, you can work with that to um, uh, benefit yourself. So it, you don't have to be an outgoing, incredible person with uh, an insane, awesome sense of style. It doesn't You don't always have to be that. You just have to be yourself. And people will recognize that and they will want to work with you because you're genuine. So I think I covered basically everything. Go out there and make some great music.